Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Diverse in the Stars podcast. Today's special guest is Peter Macon. This is going to be a fun one, everyone. You know him as Lieutenant Commander Bordis on the Orville. Season three of the Orville will be available on Hulu June 2nd. Now come join me as we go traversing the stars. Hello, Mr. Macon. Thank you so much for coming to Traversing the Stars podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Really my pleasure, sir. I'm a big fan of yours. The Orville is one of my favorite shows. Big fan of yours. The Orville is one of my favorite shows. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would hope so. I hate to be like, oh, damn it. I hate this show. <laughs> no, no. I actually, I, I dig it, man. I would watch it if, if uh, even if I had nothing to do with it, you know, because I, I love science fiction and um, it's a fun show, you know, because uh, of where it, where it lives, you know, and like in between like the, uh, the dramatic and, and, and comedic, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's sci-fi. So it's like everything you know, all in there, um, I guess, minus, you know, a clown. No, we did have a clown. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think what I love about the show, too, is that it has grown over two seasons. Like, from what it was in the first few episodes to what it became in the second season, you can Absolutely. actually watch the show mature and find it finding its voice, the characters yeah. on their voice. And yeah. I think, you know, and I think that says so much about the show and those and the creators behind it. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that's the joy of, of being able to spend so much time on uh you know one world right you know yeah. so you get to you get to spend the time to, to, to three-dimensionalize and develop uh characters and you know we get to you know uh, get to know everyone and, and and watch them deal with you know you know hyperbolic circumstances mm. and um you know in season three man it's uh wow just I, I can't say enough about it like um all of that is going to uh increase you know like threefold i mean it, mm. things get deeper the storylines are more um complicated and um intense and there's still some funny uh but um you know and you know there's a lot of uh like the the world has been just production values i mean they've really stepped up you know like it, they're like we made a bunch of movies is what it's like you know so i mean the score i mean i was just showing my mom uh yesterday a, a recording session of the uh, orchestra recording you know the score and it's like 80 plus instruments going you know and for every episode you know yeah. what i mean for, for every you know for every scene you know so i mean it, it, so it's it's just it's it's huge it's huge and so i'm i'm super excited for for fans to um to to, to see what we created because you know i feel like it's a swan song i mean i don't know if it's a swan song but i mean if you really love the first two seasons i think this is going to blow you away you know and, and i think i think one of the biggest mix, misconceptions about the orville and it, i think it's a major misconception is that when it first came out people were like okay it's a star trek spoof and right. maybe the first episode two may have been but it became its own thing it yeah. found its voice and as the actor who plays lieutenant commander of Bordis, how much say have you had in the direction of your own character a lot you know which is um you know i mean yeah you can only spoof so much you know what i mean um yeah. and, and you know you can only you know if you were doing like a half an hour long show it could be you know like jokes all the time but because it's you know, now it's an hour you know it's it's um it, it we stand on the shoulders of star trek obviously um and you know like there are some nods i mean seth is a star trek fan obviously so like the the uniforms and and just sort of the clean lines of the design of the ship and all that um but you know it 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 really you know, working on something like this this long you really get to spend some time you know developing and so you know i created a character like i've never got to do that really before which was awesome um and so you know when cats would come and audition for to play mocklands they would use me as a reference and i was like oh but you know <laughs> i i spend a lot of time or i spent a lot of time um you know developing backstory developing you know just stuff to, that so so that it makes my my world makes sense like for instance uh like with the jaloja having to urinate once a year i was like well what happens if if i don't you know and and i said well i'm gonna die you know like just to make it that and i'm like so I mean, is he dragging around a large colostomy bag? Or what's <laughs> like, you know, like, no, I mean, I, I came up with this theory that, you know, there's a chemical, uh, after a year, like there's like a chemical buildup 
um, in, in my, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to drown in my own inner fluids. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and, and that's funny, right. but, 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 you know, like in order to, you know, three dimensionalize an alien, you have carte blanche, obviously, but like the, but I have to root all of my story in truth, you know? So, mm. so that it's, I mean, even when I'm at my station, like I, I have a very particular, um, way that I, I use my instruments, you know, and it's because I'm not, I'm not just like randomly tapping buttons. I'm actually paying attention. And that's all stuff that I just built, you know, so mm. that, so that, so that, because if I was watching it, I'd be like, that guy's not, he's, he's playing, he's, he's playing solitaire. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, um, it's been really cool, like in an honor um, as an actor, um, just, and just as a, you know, a practitioner of, of the dramatic and comedic arts to, uh, to, 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 to build a world for myself, you know, and then it, everything is supported with, with all the writing. It's such, such great writing and, and Seth and the other writers um, write specifically, you know, for these characters. And so if there's something that, you know, doesn't ring true, which it has, I'm like, I think this is too wordy or, or, you know what I mean? It sounds too human, you know, because mm. English is not his first language, obviously. Right. Um, you know, I posted something on Instagram, like a funny picture of Bordis, and I was like, "This is the the look of uh, failure on my um, my my human gr grammar test." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't do so well. I mean, so I mean, I I I, I joke like that just to make it, you know, a hundred for me. Right, right. So, so going backtracking just a little bit, right? So when you first received the role of Bordis, right, for the Orville, yeah, and you you know, and you and they were you know, kind of like in the nascent stage of developing as an individual, what were your first impressions of Boris? And what did you think to yourself as, you know, I can work with this? Was there anything there that as you talked to the writers, you were like, no, nah, this got to cut this. That's not, that's not, that's not Boris. Not what, so much. Mean? I mean, there's some little tweaks here and there. Um, like, as, as I said, that sounds like, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like it's coming out of him. It sounds like it's coming out of someone writing about him. Mm -hmm. And so we just tiny little tweaks, you know what I mean? Sometimes with this punctuation. Um, and, you know, like for the, when I first auditioned, um, you know, I had to, the, the, the character description I got was that it was like a, someone like, like the thing out of Fantastic Four, like a, a, a thing made out of rocks and boulders, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of that, um, is, 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 is helped with the prosthetics because I can only turn my head so much. And we all know the no neck turn is 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 funny so um so that was helpful to sort of root me in like the physicality of the mm. person and then i sort of like imagined if sam the eagle from the muppets and eeyore from winnie the pooh had a love child <laughs> um, it would be bordis and you know it's i think he thinks he's funny um and because he thinks he's funny and he's kind of not that's funny um so like my approach to all of the language um very dry very you know like you know sets is like sometimes that's putting a hat on a hat you know what i mean it's thinking like too human but like the the you know comedy is 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 math and timing right so right you know uh in order for the the, the jokes to really land or fly like i can't comment on it you know what i mean like so like for instance like when i first auditioned um it, this it was a scene where bordis is you know telling uh ed that he's he's gonna lay an egg and he needs paternity leave and and he and 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 ed asks bordis are the eggs large and i and i say yeah they are quite large and and when i auditioned i wanted to comment on like you know like you don't have you have no idea how large <laughs> things are but he's like that's gonna that's actually taking away from the joke and the joke is for him to be very um factual about it and not comment on it because he's not like they're not, he's not a, like a commenty kind of guy right mm -hmm. i mean he just it, it is what it is and that's what it is right so it's that kind of tinkering and that kind of like you know just wordsman like seth is like a wordsmith right so like i mean he writes almost and because he's such a musician too like he writes you know like i i always imagine like my 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 dialogue is part of like a symphony right so then it has to be you know just sort of just right the thing I love about the Orville and that differentiates differentiates it's most from something like Star Trek is that unlike the characters that exist in Star Trek, Orville characters, including Bordis, are not perfect people. 
They right. screw up. They made me say to that episode with the, you know, you download the porn virus. Oh, God, I almost <laughs> killed like, everybody. Right, right. <laughs> and, 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 and I think that the best thing about the character is that they're not these perfect people. Right. So when we are th- also when you think about board is like what kind of like, flaws are you building into him as well that keeps him real identifiable for your audience conflict you know i think he's an he's, he's an extremely con- conflicted being in that you know his relationship with with his home planet right like i mean he leaves his home planet to to join the 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 union mm-hmm. um so he's already thinking outside the box i mean he's already he's already kind of a misfit you know, and so, you know, the conflict of having a mate that is sort of a traditionalist um, and, you know, that would be enough. Uh, and the fact that he's at my workplace and, you know, but we have a, a child in that, you know, so there's conflict between, you know, I think he's he's deeply conflicted between um, what his his moral compass is, is it, you know, because the, the the moral compass of the show tends to be tends to lean itself toward the, the 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 union right so which is fairly human right i mean mm. so these human values but like mocklin values and, and human values are, and, and krill values are, are are vastly different so you know trying to navigate and negotiate you know those um that that moral that that moral uh, pendulum um i think you know is a, is a, is a lot for anybody to have to deal with and i think that that's it's relatable mm. you know because we obviously in this country and in the world without you know grandstanding don't you know we're not a monolith we 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 we, we think differently we're individualists and you know and and it was just jean genet the french playwright said the greatest tragedy the greatest tragedy in life is that every man has his reasons everybody thinks they're right you know what i mean everybody yeah. thinks so you know you put that together on on a, on an on a uh, enclosed you know like space like a spaceship where you can't get off and you know you it's like a pirate ships you know like pirate pirate ships were like the first democracies right i mean they yeah. were like you know like you, you 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 it's for the good of the ship you know what i mean and individuality kind of is is, is second and it is slightly a military you know feel to it you know like um so you know you talk to soldiers and they're like listen i don't have time to think about what's right and wrong i just have to do what mm. my job is and so you know, when when the ship is under attack, for instance, you know, like in the back of my mind, I know that my mate and my child are on board. Do you know what I mean? So not only do I have to to do my job um, with precision and without emotion um, to save my crew, but to save my family. So these are huge stakes. And so these are the things like everything is is kind of it's not life or death. Not everything is life or death, but like there's there's not a lot of casual um pedestrian you know decision making everything is pretty huge and i think that that's what keeps the stakes um um high and then when the funny comes in it's a great relief you know mm-hmm. what i mean you know and the other great thing once again about board is and you know often in a sci-fi show the alien character usually is an allegory for any kind of marginalized group in society as you know as some you know symbolically they represent you know any group you want them to represent right when you're playing board and you're thinking about your character and the role that's something you actually think about, about how many different people in the real world, in groups, look to a character like Bordis as someone who can re- represent potentially them within the show. I mean, I guess maybe in hindsight, yeah, you know, but like while I'm doing it, no, because I'm just like just inhabiting the world. And but but if I am, but I am um, uh, fully aware of you know the idea of other and the yeah. idea of different trying to coexist, and that I mean, and that that's sort of the mission of. You know, keeping the peace, um, mm. just even between Clyde and, and Bordis, like uh, keeping the peace between, you know, my differences of of what I you know think or feel separate from my duty. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know, and and I've gotten a, um, a, a bit of of uh, letters from you know the, the LGBTQ community and like just dealing with like transgender, you know, or or a gender assignment or non-binary, you know, identification. Um, it, it feels good that that it, that the work that we're doing with this storyline or his character is relevant to you know you know things that were I think when when the whole uh, episode about a girl I think season one episode three came out there was still like the whole bathroom date you know what I mean about like you know who can use what bathroom right, like, right. ridiculously stupid shit like that, that that you know and you'd think four or five hundred years in the future 
you know, we, we're not like, you know, burning up our fossil fuels, but, mm. but, you know, um, and we managed to, to, to not, you know, be decimated by global warming, but we still have like pedestrian, you know, every day to day issues that we're still trying to deal with. And I think that that's what is appealing to, you know, who wants to watch perfect people do? I, I don't, you know, cause that's right. not life, right? You know I mean? It's not anywhere near what, what the reality of life is. So um, yeah. yeah, it's rich like that. Yeah, and, and I, what I like about the, how the Orville, Orville deals with it is that the crew around board is, I mean, they, they you know, they're, uh, they're friends, they care about him. And sometimes they say some dumb shit from time to time because that's what people do, but they're still trying to learn and understand. Yeah. Bordas seems to be also tolerant of, yeah, the idiots are trying to understand them, but they're not there yet. Yeah. I think that's just how out. things are, right? But they're not bad people yeah. because of it. They're just trying. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is you know you could you could write forever off of that, right? You know what I mean? Because that's what that's 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 what it is. You know, people like what would it be like to be on uh, a you know a science vessel in a Union fleet that's not a warship you know, that we're out exploring and pushing the envelope. I mean, that's, the, I, I think, and if I think about a, a young Bordas in the academy, like that's, that's what, you know, that's, I think that's what trips his trigger. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 thing, the final frontier, like, I mean, and it is a nod to, you know, Star Trek and that right, and like right. Star Trek was a show about voyaging and discovery and like seeking out, inf you know, you know, expanding the universe. And, um, to any you know sci-fi nerd that that's 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 the button right, right there that everybody has a common interest but it doesn't mean that we all know how to be around each other i mean i think that's what's so funny um and it would be shocking to find out oh wow you lay eggs um okay <laughs> <laughs> and you you know so you know there's like all these things to bump up against and i and i find that that you know like like you like I, sometimes i could i'm sitting back i'm just watching you know, like the zany humans. And I'm like, what you guys, something's wrong with you people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I and it's funny because like I said, because Bord is like I said, he's a big guy, tough guy. He has laying eggs, you know, this is these other questions here. And you're still like, what's well, so yeah, he is also he tends to kind of fly in the face of what would be considered masculine tough, you know, but he does it and he kind of presents a different way of looking at it. You know, well he's deeply sensitive as right. well. You know, I mean, like in a, in a in a way, like a child is, you know, like the whole thing with the cigarettes. I mean, it's just like that's like, ooh, this, you know, I mean, it's it's very juvenile, it's very childlike, um, and it's this discovery of human culture. So just as he's finding out about, they're finding out about, you know, the crew is finding out about like uh, alien, you know, existence. The aliens are finding out about human existence, and because right. they're aliens to us, right? So as long as you keep that on the you know, the, an equal playing field, it's interesting for everybody because it's a two-way street and, you know, like there's a lot to be mined out of that. And there's a lot to, there's a lot that mirrors our own society, you know, like just trying, just trying to get along, man. It's trying to figure yes. this shit out and how we can coexist and not go the way of the dodo. You know right. what I mean? Like <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, and I think when the, once again, another great character and the fact that they have this character for board is, is uh, Clyden. Yeah. And Clyden's such a great character because it gives you a different side of board is, but also Clyden has a very interesting history on the show and it's kind of gets to board into a shit ton of trouble um, on the show. Yeah. Um, I guess my question for you is, is Clyde, in, in your opinion, is Clyden even right for Bordas, considering how much trouble gets Bordas, she get, uh, he it gets Bordas, Bordas into? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think they're like a yin and yang, right? You know what I mean? I think Clyden keeps Bordas honest and keeps him, you know, I mean, he keeps him um, grounded in his, in the, in the reality and the history of where he's come from. Um, and it also he also pushes Bordas to you know dig dig in and dig down um, on on my on on his belief systems and like what he really believes. I mean, and if it's and if it's in a, in its conflict, but it but it, he makes him have to stand up for what he really believes, and you know sometimes that comes at a cost, you know, and sometimes like they butt heads. And but the but the great thing about their relationship is that there is a love that's that's connecting them and binding them because it would be so easy for him to you know 
but then again, it wouldn't be like I, I asked myself if, if <clears throat> you know, people people uh, who are miserable with each other, you know, and they have children, they're like, well, I'm going to stay. We're going to stay together for the kids. And then, and then at the end of the day, it's not really, in my opinion, um, having gone through that, not 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 what they think. Like the kids, like the kids are actually suffering too. But like the conflict of if if there was no topa, if there was no child, why 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 would wouldn't Clyden just leave. Would he leave? I don't know. We, you know, but I would like to think that he wouldn't. But then it's such a weird thing to have, you know, your mate on the ship. You know, like if you're at a, in, on a submarine, you know, like you wouldn't you wouldn't have your spouse on the ship with you. But it's it's that sort of thing where like, and and and, and you know, Clyden takes his vacations back to Marcos and stuff like that. But I mean, it is that sort of thing where you make the life choice to. To, to to be on the ship um, with your mate. I mean, he shops entirely too fucking much, but you know, <laughs> like, he, he, like, well, I'm like, what is he gonna do? Like, but he's a parent and he's taking care of the child too. So it's it's an interesting dynamic. Um, you know, like uh, one would argue that there's no, in reality, like I said, like you're in a submarine, there's no place for family on, on in, 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 love and war right there's no place for but this is not a warship again it's it's an ex exploration vessel so you know i think that there are some gray lines that are you know um juicy and blurry um because you know it's not just a cut and dry military operation you know so there's room for family and you know people hooking up and stuff like that so um, i mean but what if, it, when it, if it came down to it right actually it came down to it would borders you know choose his responsibility as a member of the crew or his family in time of crisis. You know what? That's there. There. That's the rub right there. Because I mean, that episode where he does, you know, give the ship a virus because of his, you know, porn addiction. I think that it, 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 it's, it's huge because, you know, like it starts from this very micro, you know, place of not, you know, getting along with my mate and my family situation. And it, you know, quickly, you know, uh, turns into this macro situation where because of that, I endanger 300 people's lives. Do you know what I mean? And so I, I don't, I don't think that's an, I don't think that that's, there's, that's not a fixed, there's not a fixed answer for that. And I think that that's what's, what's good is because that's, that's what's always going to be coming at Bordis, like family and duty, like family and like, and, and how they, you know, in how they mix in, in between, you know, so, um, and like I said, you can, you can draw, that's a deep well, that you can just, you know. So, so a couple of questions about season three. First off, what can our listeners expect from Bordis in season three? Is there anything you can kind of tease, perhaps spoil a little bit, just won't tell anybody? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, just as a fan of the show, I wouldn't, I don't like spoilers, you know what I mean? Like, I want, and, and, and I like to watch you know, I, I'll watch it sometimes. I'll go back and look at stuff and just to enjoy it because I'll forget. I'm like, oh, wow, that's where we did that. And like we shot for two years on season three. I mean, obviously COVID, you know, had a lot to do with that. But but the the episodes that we were shooting um, were so much bigger. You know what I mean? So like, they just took longer to shoot. So I actually have forgotten <laughs> a lot of what we've done i just have pictures in my head of, <laughs> I mean, of, uh, are there a few bordic bordis central episode centric episodes oh yeah that really yeah i have like in? uh i have a, 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 a quite a few uh big storylines uh to do there's a there's a whole lot of bordis coming good um and some you know some some relationship stuff with other crew members like that we haven't seen um, so yeah, there's, I, ha I had a lot to do. I was working a lot. Um, and I just, I'm so excited that I, I don't, I mean, there's just put it like this. There'll be shit that you can't unsee. Okay. That's going to title the episode. Some shit you just can't unsee. Be well, the title. You can't unsee. <laughs> um, so, you know, be grateful for your, your, your virgin minds. Right. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's going to be a wrap. <laughs> so, so and also, so, so lastly, um, there's a word that you, a phrase that you use earlier in the episode. I'm going to come back to it. And I, and so you got to expand on it. You said okay. season three is the swan song, which usually means the end. Is well, it the end or do we have a four season potentially discussed? Uh, I don't know. 
Honestly, I don't know. I mean, it get, I guess it, it largely will depend on how how um, how how well it's received. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, no one can really say. I know that you know we're there. There's a lot more to 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 do. Um, I I threw my hat in the ring for. I was like, we should do an animated episode, or we should do an, an episode of like a musical with puppets. You know, we should do. You know, like. This is so much. And so it largely depends on how it's received. And I think, and I say swan song, meaning like not the end, but just that so much went into it, you know, like, and just, just slogging through COVID. Like we were getting tested five, six days a week, you know, like, um, you know, like the model that we had just for functionality, like just, I mean, everything, this is a big crew, yeah. a lot of people, um, you know, we lost, people to other jobs you know because you know crew members because it's like it was just taking forever right but i say swan song because so much went into the creation of this season that if this is the last season um which i hope that it's not or that there's a movie or something you know behind it, it it's it's a it's a great you know mic drop you know what i mean like, mm. it, like and and i think I hope that it's just that good that people will be like, no, we need more and we need more and we need movie and we need lunch boxes and action <laughs> figures. And you know what I mean? No. So, so if they go, you know, Mr. Macon, we're, are you interested in doing season four? We're thinking about it. You're signed up. Hell yeah. Good. Hell yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> can't lose Bordas. Can't lose oh, no. <laughs> oh, I love that guy. I love, and, and, and there's only, there's only more to, you know, experience. Although we did quite a lot in this <laughs> third season, so maybe there's no place else to go. So, I don't know, I, I, but absolutely, man, absolutely, I love it. I love the character, and um, I just love wearing that makeup, you know, because it's just like so fun, just being, you know, someone else, and and really like three-dimensionalizing um, a fictitious character, right? Mm. I mean, and that's an actor's dream. So I mean, I would do this until, you know. I, there, there was this meme going around where what you look like, like when you're a hundred and something years old. I would do it like that before this is geriatric. You know what I mean? Like, and, there's, and there's more funny in there too. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, really old man. Come on. You know what I mean? Well, you got to do the future, a future episode then. That goes there, looks at a hundred years in the future of Bordis. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because we age really fast. But I mean, I think we live really long too. So mm. um but yeah, that I can, I'm already riffing in my mind about you know <laughs> what that looks like, and it's hilarious. And, <laughs> so, so this is so season three is the first time that the Orville premieres on Hulu first. Yes. So when can our Who's listeners second? get their hands on the Orville on Hulu? Uh, June second is okay. the the premiere date, and then there will be, and then it's weekly after that. Awesome. I mean? So, and there'll probably be some. You know, some repeats, and it's going to be on Disney Plus in the in in Europe, mm -hmm. and I think um, in uh, China, I think uh, or, or I think, but yeah, I mean, there's a if you go to the Hulu website, I'm pretty sure that there all of that's and I have it somewhere, um, but but it's just not coming to mind. But it will be uh, pretty readily available all over the world because I know that like um, and and it's and it's on Stars um i think in australia or something like that but anyway it's 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 going to be out there all over the world and um you know like maybe maybe not africa yet i know but they're still working on on, on that but yeah surprisingly like lithuania like crazy <laughs> places <laughs> like we didn't even you know like Japan all over. so um, well, yeah june 2nd on hulu and then every week well mr making i can't wait to watch it orville is one of my favorite children i watch watch it um every uh, used to watch it every week when it came out we're looking forward to the new scene. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a great. Yeah, I really pleasure. appreciate it. I, th I thank you. I thank you for reaching out and wanting to talk to me about it. Oh, like I said, yeah, I had to talk to Boris. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you well, and enjoy uh, season three, man. It's, it's thank gonna, you. It's gonna be wonderful. So. I